Luke says this statement where he upbraids the cities. As it says earlier in Matthew 11, verse 20 through 24. So then began he to upbraid the cities where most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. That was after this generation is like children sitting in markets, calling their fellows, saying, We have piped to you, and you have not danced. So it's like, we have given you good news, but you didn't care for it. We have mourned to you, but you have not lamented. Like, we gave you warning, but also you didn't care about that. John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a devil. The Son of Man comes eating and drinking. And you say, he is a wine-bibber and a friend of publican and sinners. Then he upbraids Chorazin and Bethsaida. So it does kind of fit. He's saying, you people have heard the good news, but you didn't care. We've given you warning, but you didn't care. John the Baptist gave you a true message. He was Elijah that you were looking for, but you ignored him. So it does make sense for this passage to be here in Matthew, where he says, Woe to you, chores and Bethsaida. Great works were done in you, and if they were done elsewhere, as much as what was done to you, they would have repented. But you guys will be brought down to hell. It sort of fits. But I think it fits more in Luke. Because he's saying... Whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not. Go your ways into the streets of the same city, even the very dust of the city which clings on us. We do wipe off against you, notwithstanding. Be you sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come near to you. And I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that city. Now it goes into, woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. So it is directly linking Sodom and Chorazin and Bethsaida, right? That link is actually in this speech in Matthew 11. It says, For if the mighty works which had been done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But that's at the end of the speech. I could put that here at the beginning. But it more closely fits because it's speaking about the cities that reject you. Also, Luke, up until now, I haven't really run into any situation where Luke moves events around. So if it's just a question between Matthew, whether Matthew has moved a speech around, or Luke, I'm going to go with Luke, because Matthew definitely moves speeches around to make them fit according to message. So from here where he's speaking about John the Baptist. Then he goes into upbraiding the cities. And after that, he prays at that time. Jesus said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. That I'm going to keep. And that really does fit after what he says in Matthew, because he says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. So this is the Pharisees who are rejecting him. But the sinners are the ones who are receiving him. So it makes total sense for him to say, I thank you, God, for you have hidden these things from the wise, the proud, is what he's really saying, and revealing them to those who are more simple or humble. But all this, where it says, then he begrade to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not, all of that until Matthew 11, 24, I'm going to move down to where I'm at, in Luke, and I'll combine them together. Matthew continues, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent, and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest to your soul. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I left this as it was, just from Matthew. But I didn't realize that there is a mirror passage in Luke. Also nearby where Jesus sent out the 70, but it's actually after the 70 return. So there's some gap of time between Jesus giving the speech to those 70 that he's sending out, saying woe to those cities that are not responding to the miracles being done in you, like Chorazin and Bethsaida. They all leave, then they come back, they report of their success in spiritual warfare. Jesus commends them and then says in Luke, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knows who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. That passage sounds almost exactly the same. It doesn't have the last verse from Matthew, which says, Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But still, I would originally just combine them because they're so similar. The problem, however, is that both of these passages from Matthew and Luke have this statement at the beginning. At that time, Jesus answered and said, Luke has it in that hour. Jesus rejoiced in his spirit and said. Both of them seem to connect what happened immediately before with this statement. I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Which is only a problem when you realize that Matthew doesn't have a gap of time between what was said before, the woes to Chorazin and Bethsaida, which I already moved, And this, it would seem as if he's speaking the woes, and then before everyone leaves and does their ministry for however many weeks it takes, he would also speak this statement, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. But then in Luke, it's got to be separate because this passage begins, Luke 10, 17, and the 70 returned again. So this is clearly after however long it took them to go out and minister. They come back. Jesus commends them. And then it says, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in his spirit. So Matthew seems to have both of these events combined. Luke has them close together, but separated by a long gap of time. How could I combine the second portion from Matthew with Luke when it's not actually following in close succession? I also looked up other gospel harmonies to see how they solve this issue. I have access to like 10 right now. And the majority do combine the woes Jesus spoke to Chorazin and Bethsaida. Some of them also combine these last statements from Matthew and Luke. I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, hidden them from the wise and prudent, revealed them to babes. Gospel harmonies that combine both include the life of Christ in stereo, by Johnson M. Trainey, The Merged Gospels by Crossland, The Combined Gospel by Graham Beach, and The Diatessaron of Tatian combines both. And all of them move that second statement from Matthew over to Luke, just like I had moved the woes to Chorazin and Bethsaida to Luke. Many gospel harmonies combine this second statement, but not the first. That would be the Harmony of the Gospels by St. Augustine. He just speaks about how the harmonies could work together. He sees that the woes to Chorus and Bethsaida should not be combined, but the second statement should be combined. And he sees it 
as fitting with Matthew. The same is with the four Gospels in four fonts and one story by Camolo. Not to combine the woes to Kors and Bethsaida, but to combine this second passage with Matthew. There are a lot of Gospel harmonies that do not combine either of these passages. That would be The Word by James H. Jenkins, a composite or composite gospel by Dr. Michael Brown of creationscienceprophecy.com, Gospel and Life by A.T. Robertson, All About Jesus by Roger Kai, The Chronological Gospel by Michael Rood, The Fourfold Gospel by McGarvey, and The Gospel and Harmony by Lovercheck. These are the ones I have access to right now. There are plenty more, but I didn't go through them all.